Oh, what's good, everybody? Welcome into the Early Edge and our weekly Friday props extravaganza. I apologize for the late start. We were just counting our winning tickets from a week ago at the pay window, and it took us a little bit longer than most shows have to do it. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. Last week, my guys, prop stars, Cian Ajad, Uncle Dave, 11-3 and three as a crew just on this show. By the way, Prop Stars has 10 consecutive weeks of profit in the props market. I guarantee you, he's the only one in America that has done that. But we don't look back. We look forward. If you want to rep all of our early edge gear, I'm going to do you a solid right now at our store, 20% off. Take that QR code right there on the screen. Use a promo code EARLYEDGE20, and you'll get 20% off. And then I encourage you to send in your pictures. We're collecting them. And then 2023, those of you who support us, we will support you. Now, with that being said, you know the stars of the show. Let's bring them in right now. Because look at these three. Are you kidding me? Coming off the week that we just had? Now, with all due respect to C and Uncle Dave, when a man's got 10 straight winning weeks, I got to come to him first. Live from parts unknown. Prop stars. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Coach. Uncle Dave, Cousin Sia, great to see you guys. Got off to a good start with week 11. We hit a uh, Alan Lazard prop last night, so started the week off right. As you can see, I'm also repping my guy over here, Brian Dayball. Shout out to my buddy Tom, who's in my Slack group, who sent me this shirt. He's a huge Giants fan. I know they're obviously division rivals of my Philadelphia Eagles, but uh, – had to represent. I'm a big fan of Saquon Barkley. As we know, he's a favorite on this very show. And also, I think Brian Dable is a great coach. So proud to represent. I feel like you're trying to justify wearing that particular shirt as the resident Eagles fan on the crew. My boy, Brian Dable. Stop it. I think the chat said it best when they asked why we were a couple minutes late. Prop stars, Jeff said, is probably just getting done with his massage. <laughs> Very true. Well, you know what Goose eats. So, I mean, it's very, very foo-foo in the Prop Stars household. Now, last week, right here on this show, our next superstar said, hey, I want to apologize to all the – I said, stop it. I said, we don't do that here. You're part of the crew. You'll have a bounce back week. Dave, what did you do last week? We already showed the people, but tell us again, what did you do? I went four and one, and it felt pretty damn good if I say so myself, gentlemen, and it's great to be back with you guys. And uh, Alex isn't the only one that went 1-0 and with player props. I gave a player prop out on Fantasy Football Today on Thursday. It was Aaron Rodgers going over 33 and a half passes. He did that with ease. We knew that the Packers would have to play from behind at this one against the Titans, and he sure did. I'm going to get away from my plan from last week, though. Last week, it was nothing but quarterback props. Couldn't find enough quarterback props I like this week. There are some, but not all. Oh, I can't wait. By the way, that little show that Dave just talked about, Fantasy Football Today, our number one show. Our number one show. And we just borrow him. Great show. Now, he is the most handsomest man in all of the early edge universe. Cena Jot. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. While we're touting our picks, I went three and one last week, as everybody knows. I think it's a few weeks in a row where I've actually gone three and one, which I, which I, from from the prop show, which I think is interesting. Also, I can share in David and Alex's um, wonder of yesterday. I had one pick yesterday for Thursday night football, and that hit as well. It was Aaron Jones under longest rush, fifteen and a half. He had a fourteen yard rush, but nothing even close to that. Uh, otherwise, so we went three and zero just on this show, and we haven't even started the prop show yet. That's pretty awesome. And I've got some plays today. I'm going to release a play tomorrow, and let's see what happens. That's exactly right. We release them all weekend long because they come out at different times. So, enough touting. Last week, it's time to look forward to this week because this is what we're here for. This is what we're all about. And see, we're going to start with you. So we're going to start with the Bears and the Falcons. The numbers three Falcons favorite total forty nine. But this show is all about props. But those numbers can matter into the game script that we think. So that's why I give them to you. What do you like in this game, Sia, for us to start? Yeah, let's start with Darnell Mooney, over 43 and a half receiving yards at minus 115. Uh, you know, this is one of those situations where I think the Bears will kind of be able to do whatever they want. But I think Atlanta might push them, too. My concern with this prop is that I, I think the pace could be a little slow, particularly on the Atlanta side. But but let's talk about Darnell Mooney. He's eclipsed this total in six of his last seven. And the one time he didn't eclipse this total, by the way, it was 43 yards. So he was a half yard 
under the total. He's clearly the number one wide receiver for the Bears, and he's going up against the worst secondary in the league, who may get a player back, but maybe not. And even so, I really like Darnell Mooney because this secondary is really bad. Uh, By the way, Atlanta, not only can they not cover, but they can't create a pass rush either. And I think that's going to give Justin Fields a little bit more time to look for his receivers, namely Darnell Mooney, and maybe uh, slightly less inclined to rush because of that. So I do like uh, I do like Justin Fields in this game, Justin Fields with his arm, and I do think that's going to benefit Darnell Mooney. Last week, Fields only had 20 pass attempts. He completed 12 of them. I do expect those pass attempts to tick up like they did the few previous weeks, and I do expect Darnell Mooney to get quite the target share. So give me Darnell Mooney over 43 and a half receiving yards in a game, by the way, that has a high total. I think this is a fantastic play because if they're going to stop Justin Fields with his legs, they've got to play a big old zone to keep their eyes on him, and that's going to mean guys are going to open up all over the field, just like Sia said. I love this play. I still think one of us will probably have a Justin Fields prop on Sunday. We'll just have to wait and see, but I've been casting that lately as well. All right, next game, and by the way, uh, Peliknar in the chat says, best prop team in the business, hands down. We agree. So, next game, Browns and the Bills. This one now has been moved to Detroit, so all the numbers have changed. The Bills now laying eight. The total went right back up, just like we thought it would, 49 and a half. If you've already made a bet on this game, it's going to be canceled. you got to go back in and make it again. So, with a fast track, with playing indoors, Alex, you found one player that should erupt on Sunday. Who is it? Yeah, Stefan Diggs. I'm going over 85 and a half receiving yards. Listen, this guy has been absolutely phenomenal this season. If it wasn't for Justin Jefferson making that ridiculous catch and Tyreek Hill, a lot of people would be talking about the season Stefan Diggs have, is, is currently having. He is on pace for... Uh, 1,860 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 145 receptions. He is averaging 110 receiving yards per game. Through nine games alone, he has 985 yards, 72 receptions, and seven touchdowns. He also has the benefit of playing on the highest volume passing offense in the NFL. I talk about that all the time. He has an elite 30% target share and a 37% air yard share. That is what you look for when you're talking about a recipe for potential spike games. Furthermore, they're playing the Browns, who are just 26th in EPA allowed per dropbacks. This is a fantastic matchup as well. What's also interesting, I was reading this in this weekly column that I read, uh, is that he only has an 85% route rate, which is actually somewhat low for an elite wide receiver. But in last week's game against the Vikings, he had a 98% route rate. So that is certainly uh, notable. And hopefully there's even more room for additional Stefan Diggs plays uh, in this game versus the Browns. He has a 2.89 yards per route run. That is elite. This guy is just having a historically great season. I cannot emphasize that enough. Plus, this is a very good matchup against the Browns. Plus, we know this Bills team, their identity is to throw the football that's what they do first and foremost doesn't matter who they play and this is also a good matchup in addition to that so this just checks every single box to me this should have opened in the mid 90s in my opinion he deserves to be in that same class as Tyreek and Justin Jefferson who opened around 94 and a half over the last few weeks so give me Stefan Diggs I played this up to probably 92 and a half yards I feel like you just quoted yourself from the article that you write for a little place called Sportsline that people can get on Friday. Was that the quote? Your own article? No, I was actually quoting a gentleman named Pat Curran who works for, I believe, Roto World. Okay. Shout out, Pat. That's next level touting if you're touting your own article (laughs) and took the quote out of it. I would do that, Coach. (laughs) I know you would. I know you would. A couple of things for Sia and for Dave. They're asking about Mooney. I don't know if you said what you'd play it up to. Uh, Right now, a lot of books have it at 45 and a half for your Mooney play. That would be the limit. That's where I'd stop. I think you're okay betting it at 45 and a half. I wouldn't go anywhere above above that. All right. And Dave, back to that uh, Falcons game for a second. No, no, no. Matt Ryan no longer plays for the – see? I had to catch myself. We'll get to Matt Ryan in a second. That was a check. See? I – See how easily you go back to the teams that they used to play for? It, for it happens years? all the time. Totally right. happens all the time. No problem with that. And I think I know which prop you're going to ask about. Well, let's just I've do got right an now. answer for you. All right, Matt Ryan over 228 and a half passing. Yards. That's the one. we were. I was looking at that one. I don't like it enough to put it in my top five this week. But you, you got to figure that the Colts are trail. First of all, they're not playing the Raiders this week. 
It's the Eagles, and it's going to be an angry and feisty Eagles team, but it's also going to be a tired Eagles team. They played over 80 snaps of defense on Monday night. Now they're playing on Sunday night. That's one of the reasons why I like one of Sia's props this week. A little foreshadowing there. I think Matt Ryan's going to have to throw a lot. It's going to be a lot of short throws, a death by paper cuts type of thing. I don't think he can get you more past 240, 245, but over 228, I'll say, yeah, he can do it. You could put a sprinkle on it. I hope the Eagles players are a little bit more fired up than Eagles fans are this week because clearly from the example we have here, they don't even care. They don't even care. They're wearing Giants head coach shirts <laughs> this week. That's how little they're they're discounting the <laughs> Indianapolis Colts and the Fighting Jeff Saturdays. All right, game number three, Jets and the Patriots. And I believe in an article that I was reading today to prepare for this show, the Patriots have beaten the Jets 13. Times in a row. Uh, they're laying Ooh. three and a half. Total low is 38. And Dave, you think that Zach Wilson will have a low day as well? Talk to me. Uh, well, I mean, it's going to be low compared to what he did last time against the Patriots, which was 355 passing yards. Totally came out of nowhere. But I think he's going to go over 190 and a half passing yards. So somewhere in the 200s is where Zach Wilson will land. They're daring you to take the under here. He's been under 155 yards in three of his past four games. That's where they want you to put your money. Don't do it. What happened in three of those past four games that I'm talking about? Well, first of all, the Jets won all three of those games. And they were all games when they were able to run the ball really well. Two of them were with Brees Hall. Remember Brees Hall? He was awesome. Now he's <laughs> on IR. I, I missed that guy. Michael Carter had a big game. That was against Buffalo. That was a little bit of a surprise. Average 6.3 yards per carry. It's hard to believe the Jets are going to be able to run the ball on the Patriots. They've got a good run defense. They have been awesome. Coach, you just talked about it. They've beaten the Jets a bazillion straight times in a row. They're also and three. They're also three and zero oh against the Jets. The Jets are zero oh and three when Zach Wilson starts. So I'm banking on the Jets playing from behind, not being able to run the football. Perfect recipe for Zach Wilson to put the ball in the air. And something that Wilson did in that game against Buffalo stands out to me. He was getting rid of the ball quickly. He was having decisions made for him pre-snap, or he made them pre-snap. And then he got rid of the ball before the defense could get to him, before he could leave the pocket. It's smart coaching by the Jets. So I think that we could see him just get good volume again, 35 so pass attempts, and come up within that 220, 230-yard range. Here's the last thing, and this is a fun fact. In his career, Zach Wilson has averaged 195 yards in his losses. That includes two games where he left early with injuries. If we take those games out, the number is 223. Oh, that's oh. the number I'm looking for here. And the fact that the book is giving you 190 and a half, it's a gift. Go over Zach Wilson over 190, 190 and a half, not 195, but I'd play 195, 190.5 pass yards at minus 115. Oh, I tell you all the time, educate and entertain. How many of you knew that little Chick-fil-A nugget that Dave just gave you? I would say zero. I would say zero. That's why they're the best in the biz. Let's go. All right. So each capper has now given one best bet for props. So we're really going to sink our teeth into this next one because we've already talked about it. Eagles on the road laying seven at the Colts, who also went on the road last week and beat the Raiders in Las Vegas, total 45 and a half. The Eagles, of course, coming off that just dismal performance at home against the Commanders on Monday night. See, I'm coming back to you because you like a little receiver in this game that the number isn't too high for us. Who do you like? Well, first of all, I don't know that it was a dismal performance. They played one of the best teams in the NFL, my Washington Commanders. So listen, teams lose to the Commanders. That's just a thing that happens. <laughs> By the way, speaking of losing things, I drafted Brees Hall in our sports line league. And I lost him almost immediately. And I'm still the leader in points in that sports line league. So I just wanted to put that out there. Watch FFT DFS. If that's not a reason to watch FFT DFS with me and Mike McClure, it's in your feed right now. Check it out. The receiver I like is Paris Campbell over 37 and a half receiving yards. That's minus 120. Listen, Paris Campbell has been that guy over the last, well, certainly last game he was that guy. He lines up in the slot more often than not, and so that means he's going to go up against the backup slot corner because Avante Maddox is on IR. This is where you attack the Eagles, especially in a negative game script, which the Colts will likely find themselves in. Where you attack them is in the slot. Again, no Avante Maddox. The targets open up with Paris Campbell quite a bit, excuse me, with Matt Ryan quite a bit last week. 
he caught seven of nine targets for 96 yards. But the two prior times he played with Matt Ryan, don't forget Sam Ellinger was in there for a little period of time. He had 70 and 57 receiving yards, easily eclipsing this 37 and a half receiving yard total. I do think Jonathan Taylor is going to get a lot of run in this game. But I also think in a seven point spread, which really isn't moving right now, it's Eagles minus seven at minus 105. So perhaps it might go down to six and a half. But I do think even though Jonathan Taylor will get a ton of run, I think Paris Campbell will be the receiver of choice. And all he really needs to do is get maybe three catches here, maybe three to four catches here to eclipse his 37 and a half receiving yard total. And I think he's going to do it. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Dave, do you agree? I do agree. I, I love this prop. I wanted to play it myself, but Sia found it first and he found it at better juice. So props to Sia for doing the extra legwork on that one. Here's a one final point. My last point on Paris Campbell. He actually has a catch, a single catch, good for at least 35 yards in each of his past two games. So this is, th that's not right. It's two of the past three. I wrote down each of the past three. It's not true. <laughs> but it's still two of the past three. The point is, is that he could go over this on one play. See how laid out what the matchup is, the way the secondary is for Philadelphia, not having Avante Maddox. You saw the commanders take advantage of it. Uh, I lied, Coach. It was more than one thing, two things. I, I, but I co-signed the bet. Thank you. Hey, if you're co-signing, I'm all about it. By the way, it was pretty obvious to me, Jeff Saturday, who I told you guys on the show last week, I worked with for two or three years at ESPN. Everybody loves him, but it was very clear what he said. If I'm only going to have an eight-game uh, tryout, I'm going to use – my veteran quarterback and my veteran running back. We're going to see where we fall. Why would he go away from that this week against potentially the best team in the NFC? I don't think that he will. All right. Now, a <clears throat> couple things in the chat. Hill to top says, Hey Dave. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm just the messenger. I'm just the host. Help see you get into the club, please. He needs a boost. He's tired of looking at Coach Proppy and the crew. Yes, Alex? Yeah, the one time Dave tried to get in on the fun and participate, he, he submitted like a, pro, a player that was like plus 400. So Dave's already been uh, excluded from the club. Access denied. There's a picture of Dave. If you walk in, you know how like guys get flagged at a bar or whatever, and you go behind the bar, and there's a picture, do not serve this man, immediately call the authorities. That is Dave at the club. So Dave is not welcome in the club after that infraction. I would I was expecting the, the resident lawyer to be aware of that, but Sia does need serious help getting in the club. Just not gonna come from Dave, I'm afraid. I mean, there's no question. When you when you get into double digit weeks like week eleven and you haven't even come close. I would start to be feeling the pressure too. I mean, me and Alex, me and you don't feel the pressure, but I understand if Sia does. We've been toasting in there for weeks oh, now. It's been it's amazing. Been epic, I've, yeah. I've had to stop talking about it because I, I feel for it. All yeah. right, could you define what it takes to get in the club? Just for everybody who who yeah, doesn't no, know, no, no, no problem. I thought that was facetious. Uh, yes, so it's a little fun game we play, and right now we're actually running a contest. If anybody watching right now wants to play in it, we're actually naming the club that most of us are in right now. But to get in, you got to correctly predict the first touchdown of the game on a primetime game, Thursday, Sunday, or Monday. But it has to be plus one thousand or higher. It can't be Alvin Kamara at plus four hundred. It's got to be somebody you really got to do the work. You got to be a top level capper to predict this kind of stuff and get into the club. I mean, you just do. It, it, there's levels to this game, Dave. Dave, Level you won't believe this. this. You won't believe this, but there was a guy last year who actually got into the club <laughs> three different times. I know it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Anyway, that club yeah. is closed, by the way. Yeah, that club's uh, been all right. closed. <laughs> all right. Next game. Next game. Next game. It's funny. I actually met my ex wife at a club that is closed now. Maybe that was a sign. All right, Commanders laying three in Houston. Now, the Texans, last week, all of us that were on the Giants, they kept driving inside the 20. Turnover, 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 turnover. So they can move the ball. They just didn't score last week. So total 40 and a half. But this Washington team, do not sleep on them. I know we kids see you all the time, but now Taylor Heineke is the starting quarterback. It doesn't matter what Carson Wentz does or how healthy he is. He's not getting his job back. It's the right move. This game is so popular, all of my guys have a pick in it. So, Proppy, let's start with you. What do you like? 
Coach, what do we do when props start to trickle out slowly? We explore other markets. Hence, I am going to Brian Robinson anytime touchdown. I was actually very surprised to find this at plus 110 on DraftKings. I expected this to be like minus 110 to minus 120. So I think this is very good value. Here is why. First off, the Texans have allowed a league leading 13 rushing touchdowns to opposing running backs through nine games. They are 32nd. That is dead last in rushing DVOA, 31st in run grade, 27th in EPA allowed per rush, 30th in defensive rush success percentage. This is the worst run defense in the NFL by a significant margin. They allow 34.7 rushing attempts per game. Okay. The team that allows the second most, the Panthers give up 30. They give up nearly five additional rushing attempts per game than the Panthers, who are a huge run funnel as well. So here we have one of the most run heavy, heavy teams in the NFL, in the Commanders, playing against the biggest run funnel, not only the biggest run funnel, but the worst run defense in the NFL as well. Uh, Robinson coming off of playing 52% of the snaps against the Eagles. The commanders really want to establish the run. That is the path of least resistance. That's how teams are playing this Texans defense. I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit on two touchdowns as well. I think Brian Robinson at plus money is a great value to get into the end zone against a porous Texans run defense. And for those people that watch this show or our Sunday show, know that just a few weeks ago, my man Proppy cast a plus 2,500 ticket on Austin Eckler to score multiple touchdowns. Yes, Alex. I believe I have given out six anytime touchdown bets as official plays this season, yet to miss one. I'm just letting that sink in for a second, letting it marinate. Not one! Not one! Now... One of my favorite names ever is Nico. I don't know why I've always loved Nico. I just like Nico. And see, apparently this week, so do you. What do you have? Yeah, I like Nico too. I like Nico Collins over 40 and a half receiving yards. So he's eclipsed this number, just so you know, in five out of the list, five out of the last six games he's played. And he faces a Washington secondary that just really isn't good covering the receiver, particularly the outside receivers, as opposed to slot. Um, the Washington run defense, by the way, is, is pretty good. So I do think, you know, Damian Pierce, he's always going to get the volume, but I do think the Washington run defense is going to, to force the game plan to, to maybe put it in Davis Mills' hands a little bit more than normal. Uh, Davis Mills' uh, passing yards prop is 221 and a half. So I, I do think, Yes, Brandon Cooks is playing, but I do think it's Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins, their target share when they're both on the field, both both of them exceed around 20%. So they're in that 20 to 24% range. And I think if that's the case, with a 221-yard passing prop for Davis Mills, I do think he gets there. Uh, he's got a decent A dot. The target share is there. And again, outside receivers, Washington, not very good at covering them. So Nico Collins, 40 and a half is a pretty low number for a guy who just is coming off 10 targets last week. That's exactly right. Quick chat fantasy question for you, Sia. So I'm assuming I should start Robinson over David Montgomery in fantasy. That's from Glenn. No, I actually wouldn't start Robinson over David Montgomery, and, and partially because, and this is a different analysis outside of the prop. So keep in mind, Khalil Herbert's on IR, and Ebner's probably not going to get a lot of runs. So David Montgomery's not only going to get most of the rushing attempts, but he's going to get some passing work against his poorest Atlanta defense as well. So I think from a now David Montgomery off the top of my head, I believe he's 6,100 on DraftKings. Brian Robinson is 5,300. If you want to take that savings, I get it. But because Brian Robinson isn't involved in the passing game and Montgomery is likely to be involved in the passing game, I would go with David Montgomery. I'd pay up for him. I can tell you on FFT DFS, we literally laid out our favorite running backs on this slate for both cash games and tournaments. I highly encourage you to listen to that. It's me and Mike for an hour doing a game-by-game -game preview, plus our top three at each position, plus our cheat sheet. Boom. Dave, hang tight. Alex, quickly, what do you got? Yeah, Brian Robinson, just from a fancy standpoint, real quick, he's extremely touchdown dependent. He has zero passing game. Uh, that is all that all that work belongs to either J.D. McKissick, if he's active, or Antonio Gibson. Uh, so, yeah, Robinson gets, gets no work in the passing game. You're basically just banking on him scoring touchdowns, which is why I like this prop so much. But, yeah, from a fantasy standpoint, uh, couldn't agree more with Sia Montgomery. Much superior play. There you go. We're not just about picks on this show. It's all about real-time analysis. Now, last week, one of the plays for Alex that cashed, and you talk about a sweat, was Taylor Heineke under 
to 15 and a half, if I remember that was the number. And that he said, I would play it all the way down to 209. I got it at 211 and a half. What do you think his number was? 211. 211. That's how good Alex has been. Crazy. And Dave, you're on Taylor Heineke again this week. Talk to me. It was actually at 215 and a half pass yards this week as well. And I'm doing the exact same play. I'm taking the under on Taylor Heineke, but it's under 213 and a half down two yards from last night. So we're trending in the direction of an under as it is. So you should probably book it before it goes down even further, because if you wait too long, you're going to lose it. Coach is an example of getting this close to losing, but he didn't. He won. And the bottom line is that at the number of 213 and a half, Heineke's been under that in three of his past four starts. He's been under 7.4 yards per attempt in three of his past four starts. Quarterbacks versus Houston. They're getting 226 passing yards per game. Heineke is averaging 200, 210 pass yards per game in his four starts. The expectation, and, and really this just correlates with what Proppy was saying, Washington should be able to run the ball on the Texans. They've got the bottom-ranked run defense. In the league, they're 30th in defensive rush EPA. They're going to take the ball out of Heineke's hands. He's not going to have to throw that much. I kind of thought about taking the under on his 28 and a half pass attempts. That's at better odds. That's a plus 100. I don't hate that. I'm going to put a sprinkle on that. But this is the one that I think has the safest chance of going under. Taylor Heineke, under 213 and a half passing yards at minus 121. This definitely feels like a get in and get out type of game for the commanders. Alex, go. Yeah, I really like this play quite a bit. I also wanted to point out that Heineke, despite the commanders playing literally nearly three times as many offensive snaps as the Eagles in that game, still stayed under 210 yards. So they ran so many offensive plays. They threw the ball a ton, but still stayed under any plus you had Terry McLaurin having a spike game as well. So I just think this is a great spot. I just don't think we're going to see a lot of passing volume uh, from t- uh, Heineke or the commanders. So yeah, I think Dave's spot on with this one. Yeah. Houston's not going to score a lot of points. They showed that last week. End zone is not their friend. It is not their friend. So <clears throat> let's move on to the next game. What a good show. What a good flow going so far today. Now Panthers and the Ravens. I cannot believe. Cannot believe, and I know the Panthers got blown out by the Cincinnati Bengals, but the three other games in the last four, they've been competitive and they've been winning. But yet, Ravens are favored by 13, the total sitting at 41. Alex, when you went into the lab, what did you think this game script was going to be? Yeah, first and foremost, I also am shocked at this 13-point spread as well. I just don't think Baltimore deserves to be 13-point favorites over anyone. But, uh, yeah, that being said, I just think Dante Foreman has been very good. I think his rushing yards are about 7 to 9 yards too low. So I'm taking him over 50 and a half rushing yards. He's totaled 100-plus yards on the ground in three of his previous four games. He has been somewhat of a revelation in this Panthers' backfield. He's coming off a 130-yard performance against the Falcons, but he's had 10 days to recover. Uh, Having the extra time, I think, will certainly benefit him in this matchup. So looking at this Ravens defense, at first glance, they look very good against the run. They've given up the third fewest yards two opposing running backs this season. But if you look at some important metrics, they actually paint a much different story. They're 22nd in EPA allowed per rush, 14th in run defense grade, 21st in defensive rush success percentage. Also, Chuba Hubbard was back in the lineup last week against the Falcons, and Dante Foreman still played 68% of the snaps, which was his season high. So I am confident that he has proven himself and has uh, asserted himself as this lead back in this Panthers backfield. So not really worried about that. Furthermore, I think this Ravens uh, defense is overrated, as I mentioned. And yeah, Foreman has played very well. Also, going from P.J. Walker to Baker Mayfield, to me, I think that's an upgrade at quarterback, frankly. All due respect to P.J. Walker. Great story. Seems like a great human being, but uh, just was not getting it done at quarterback. I just, Even though Baker was struggling early in the season, I still think he offers more uh, as far as quarterback position goes uh, than P.J. Walker. So I think that will actually help Dante Foreman as well. If this game is competitive, 
He's going to go over this total. There is a scenario where the Ravens get up huge and then the, the Panthers are forced to abandon the run. We've seen that happen before, but I just don't have as much faith in this Ravens offense. Just could, could be without Mark Andrews. We know all the injuries at the receiver and running back position. I just have a hard time seeing this Ravens team blowing out the Panthers, at least at first. I think the game will be competitive at first. If this game's competitive, I think Foreman goes over this easily. All right, two of the big ones right now, MGM and DK have this already at 56 and a half, Alex, or alternate spread 50 plus at minus 170. What would you do? Uh, that just likely means that there's a there's a lapse of time between when we submit the picks and then sometimes there's there's betting groups or syndicates out there that will call a prop during that duration of time and cause a lot of line movement. Just wanted to explain why that happens to our viewers. But uh, at 56 and a half, unfortunately, I would tell you to pass. Okay. Maybe it'll come back. Hate to we'll be the bearer of bad news, coach. Yeah. Maybe and it all depends on what, on what book you, you play at. Because a lot of times. He's also fluctuate. Yeah, 100%. He's also 100%. fluctuate a lot between now and Sunday. So just yeah. keep an eye on it. Yeah, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Great advice. All right, next game. Now, this morning, the maestro gave out Alvin Kamara his under-rushing pop, and he gave out all the Chick-fil-A nuggets you could ask for on why it won't be a good running day for him. So, Dave, I'm coming to you. Rams are traveling to the Big Easy. Saints are favored by three. This has yuck written all over it. I mean, I don't even want to watch this. I just want to look at my box score and go, yeah, I got Juwan. I almost give away your pick. Total is 39. Who do you like here, Dave? Guess who, coach? Juan <laughs> Johnson, over 27 and a half receiving yards at only minus 104. I like those odds. This was also at 25 and a half last night, so it's going in the wrong direction, but I would play it up to 29 and a half. He truly took hold as a regular part of the Saints offense in week number six, and in these past five games, he's had at least 32 yards four times. The only time he didn't, week eight, a 24 nothing drubbing of the Raiders. Raiders offense was terrible. Raiders defense has been terrible. It feels like it's been years that we've been able to say that about the Raiders. The Saints took advantage. Jawan Johnson did not deliver. And that could be a little bit of a worry because the Rams offense, really, when you look at them, yuck. You, you said it quite concisely. <laughs> but here's the concern. This Saints defense played 84 snaps last Sunday and 155 total snaps over their past two games since Monday, November 7. You might need a calendar for this one. This game, the one that I'm talking about with the Saints and the Rams, it's on November 20th. That means they're going to play 155 defensive snaps plus whatever they play on Sunday in the span of 13 days. This is going to be a tired Saints defense. Rams might actually put up some numbers here and force Andy Dalton to not just hand off all game long. Not that he's going to be successful handing off. The maestro nailed it. The best part of this Rams defense is their defensive front. And the offensive line is a problem for the New Orleans Saints. And when the offensive line is a problem for the Saints, that means Andy Dalton's got to get rid of the ball quickly. And who was that guy who he got rid of the ball quickly to, especially in the two-minute drill last week? It was Jawan Johnson. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't, even if they don't, that Rams run defense could step up. It just so happens that Johnson was the Saints leader in targets, catches, and even yards last week. Thanks to what happened at the end of the first half, his 25% target share was a career high. He did well with it. It wouldn't surprise me if the saints continue to use him as one of their top perimeter types of pass catchers for Andy Dalton. And maybe that helps them get Chris Olave going a little bit more, but all we're looking for, for Juwan Johnson, it's not a fantasy play. He just needs 30 yards. He's going to get it against the Rams at minus one Oh four. There is no way they're going to go away from anything that is working. There's no way. And this, as you said, was working. So I love this play with Juwan Johnson. All right, don't forget, my guys are very, very expensive. We pay them a lot of money, so we got to pay those pesky little bills. Let's have a word from one of our incredible partners. And we are back. For those watching on YouTube, this is our prop extravaganza we do it every single friday also we value all of you listening in the audio version apple and spotify thank you for downloading us as well now we got a few more picks to get to and right now raiders and the broncos two of the most disappointing teams in the entire league this particular year and now with the chiefs really cementing themselves these are two teams that probably are going to miss the playoffs but there is a number that Dave you thought was too good to be true 
What is it? Can't even believe this one. It's Melvin Gordon again, over nine and a half receiving yards. That's it. Nine and a half at minus 120. I think I'd play this one into the teens. He's gone over this in three straight games. And in every game this year, when he's had at least two targets, that's it. Two targets. He goes over this number. We also saw him play 12 of 23rd and fourth down snaps last week. That was with Chase Edmonds making his debut for the Broncos. And I'll tell you what, Melvin Gordon was reliable for Russell Wilson. So I'm not sure if Chase Edmonds is going to take over that passing downs role anytime soon. And the Raiders, uh, here we go. You know, Raiders fans are going to hate me for this because here we go again, bashing the Raiders. But facts are facts, guys. They're bad everywhere defensively. They're bottom 10 in catch rate allowed to running backs and a gloriously awful sixth worst in yards per catch. So we're talking about like two catches for Melvin Gordon getting this job done. This is my favorite bet of the week. Melvin Gordon over nine and a half receiving yards at minus 120. Let's go. That game starting at 4 or 5 Eastern time on Sunday. By the way, Aaron says, first time finally watching you guys live, and I'm loving all this value, LOL, which leads me to the next one that I want to comment on. Jeff says, would love to see a couple of unders. Here's the thing, Jeff. We don't force any of our picks. We also tell you all the time. You don't have to play all of our picks either. My guys, I don't let them talk to each other. They find the plays that they love that can fit into it. That's why we always tell you, you got to watch the show and listen to the information to use it for this week or use it in the weeks to come because the numbers are always moving. That's the thing about props. So we have a lot of unders, just not this week, just not this week. All right. But if you think the numbers are too high, then play the under yourself. I believe we showed a stat that we were 11 and three last week, though, at the start of the show. So I would be very careful going against my guys. Very, very careful. Now, this next game and Proppy, they're asking in the uh, chat, when will your article be dropping today, sir? So due to the fact that props are trickling out very, very slowly this week, I actually received an extension on my article. Uh, one amazing thing about working for CBS Sportsline, I just need to give praise because other platforms do not give you this courtesy, is they allow me to basically determine when my article can come out based on when props come out. So I was given until tomorrow morning, so it'll likely be out sometime, I would say, around between 10 and noon a.m. Eastern. Because we're all a team. We're all a crew. We all pick each other up. That's what happens. That's what we do. Other places can do what they want to do. We're a team, and all of you watching are a part of that. All right, now, next game. And this may be, I don't know if it's going to attract the most money, but I think it's going to be the most attention. I really, really do. Cowboys laying one and a half at the Vikings, who are now tied with the Eagles for the top record in the NFC after that game of the year in Buffalo last week. The total, 48 and a half, which I like very, very much. Proppy, let's start with you. There is a guy in Dallas that finally, it seems like, the Cowboys are saying, you are the man. Who am I talking about? You're talking about Tony Pollard, and you certainly earned that right, Coach. That's why we're taking him over 41 and a half rushing yards. Listen, Pollard, he has eclipsed this in seven of nine games this season while averaging just a hair under 70 rushing yards Per game, Jerry Jones has said that Ezekiel Elliott will be returning to the Cowboys lineup this week, essentially to enter a timeshare with Tony Pollard. He actually said the same thing last week, and Ezekiel Elliott ended up being inactive. So to me, this is a number that is way, way, way closer to Tony Pollard's floor then his ceiling, especially because I don't think there's a 100% guarantee that Zeke suits up. Furthermore, if Zeke does suit up, Tony Pollard has been incredibly efficient. I'll talk about some of the metrics shortly. This season, he has been phenomenal, and he is more than capable of getting there on limited touches. Also, if we've seen Tony Pollard play, I think anyone would say that he has earned the right to at least lead the backfield. At the very minimal, he's earned the right to get some more touches in this Cowboys offense looking at some of those metrics I was talking about he is first in rush yards over expected per attempt seventh in success rate seventh in breakaway percentage eighth in elusive rating he has been absolutely phenomenal this season he has been better than Ezekiel Elliott in literally every single uh, metric out there besides maybe pass blocking this guy has played so well he offers such an explosive dynamic element to this Dallas offense Dallas also likes to run the ball a lot their favorites in this game it's a competitive game environment 
Uh, so yeah, this just looks like a great spot to get the floor of Tony Pollard when this could be like 70 or 80 yards if Zeke ends up being inactive. And if Zeke is active, I still think he's going to get between 10 and 13 rushing attempts. And that's easily enough to eclipse this 41 and a half rushing yards line. So I absolutely love this play. Tony Pollard over 41 and a half rushing yards. I'd play it up to 45 and a half. Kirby says whenever Proppy goes for so long, he needs to say furthermore, you know, it's a good one. They know you, Alex. They, they know you. They really, really do. Furthermore. Oh, I love when you do that. Furthermore. All right. Now, we saw last week, and we have seen on many, many weeks that the Vikings can move the ball, they can score, they can put up points, but they don't always stop a lot of people. What does that mean? It means the Cowboys will have a lot of possession. That helps Alex's play. And then the Vikings have an absolute stud that if the Green Bay Packers didn't expose the Cowboys' defense, I don't know what did. See ya. Talk to me. You're absolutely right, Coach, and you're also absolutely right that all eyes are going to be on this game. This will be this game will attract so much attention, and I believe that's part of the reason Dalvin Cook is going to be featured perhaps even more than he ordinarily would be, and maybe be on the field a little bit more than his backup Alexander Madison. I have a it's a high number here. I have Dalvin Cook over 98 and a half rushing and receiving yards at minus 115. Yes, that's a high number, but this Cowboys defense, particularly against the run, they're allowing a lot of explosive plays. For the record, they can really rush the passer, too. How do you neutralize that? You hand the ball off to Dalvin Cook. I think he's really going to get it in the rushing game and the receiving game. But for the record, in the rushing game, he's been really good in two out of the last three. The only one where he wasn't, he had to play the vaunted rush defense of my Washington Commanders. Otherwise, he's had great, great yards per carry and, and very high rushing totals. I really like uh, Cook in rushing receiving because he's starting to get more targets. Over the last three games, he's had five, six, and six targets. So you give me the targets, you're giving me the rush attempts, you're giving me the efficiency against the Cowboys' uh, rush defense that's pretty porous, and I think he eclipses this high number of 98.5 uh, rushing and receiving yards. Cowboys' defense is an absolute sieve. I mean, they're terrible. They cannot guard anybody, and he's one of the top five talents in the entire league. By the way, the reason what we're talking about, Reed just pointed it out in the chat. He says, oh, man, no Pollard or Zeke rush numbers posted on my books. That's what we've been telling you for the entire hour. Every book is different. Everyone, depending on the money that's coming in, that's how they post and take things down. It's a numbers game, but sometimes you've got to really keep your eye on it. That's why you got my guys. Turn on those notifications. Every time they make a pick or drop an article, you get notified. One pick left. Yeah, see ya. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, to that point about books, like, you know, numbers trickling out and books having different numbers. Uh, the the play that I release, you know, if it comes out tonight, I might even have it tonight. Maybe it gets released tomorrow morning. That that's, You can follow Sportsline for that. But it's probably going to involve Dalvin Cook again. I may end, And I'm not going to say where I'm going with it because I feel okay. like people are watching and, and what have you. And I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's really not. So I, I just want everybody to know that, that Dalvin Cook, I am actually focused on something that I might end up e liking even better than this Dalvin Cook prop I just gave out, which I do like. And I'm just waiting for the number to come out. I've been waiting all week for it. Unfortunately, it didn't come out before this, this show started. So just stay tuned because usually on Saturday, whether it's evening, early afternoon, maybe even the morning tomorrow, um, that's going to be released uh, at Sportsline. Quite the tease. Alex, go. Cowboys, one of the biggest run funnels in the NFL, also have proven to be bad against the run as well. Furthermore, especially the last few weeks, I come into this stream usually with like eight or nine props, and then I like – uh trim some of them down and i sometimes use the additional props that i don't use for my article both dalvin cook and uh darnell mooney were two of the props that i almost gave out on this stream so just wanted to give a quick shout out and some uh affirmation to sia and his props affirmation i said we're going to church i need some affirmation today yes all right now one play left and there is a big sunday night football game this week my beloved kansas city chiefs who are now the number one seed in the AFC. They're laying five at a Chargers team that has not been very good lately. Let's just be honest. Total 52. Oh, UMass just won. Sportsline had them winning today. Boom, right there on a last second three. See, we're wow. always cashing tickets. We're always cashing tickets in real time. They did 71-69. They just won on the money line. Boom, let's go. So, Dave. I didn't mean to get distracted. My apologies. All right. Thank you. That was a very maestro thing to do. 
It's uh, it, you know it's it's because we won. If we if we had lost the bet and you interrupted <laughs> or distracted or whatever, I would have been like, "What are you doing?" You're Come right. On. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, oh. All right. So the total is a fifty-two. It's probably going to be the highest total of the entire week. And I had a guy at Whole Foods this week, Dave. True story. I walked in, and I love buying steaks and seafood and all that kind of stuff. The guy always takes care of me, my meat guy. He looks at me and said, the rich just got richer. And I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, really? You guys really needed Tony to add to your offense? I said, yes. Yes, we did. Because Uncle Dave loves him. And we needed another prop for our show this week. So that's a long way to tell you I love having Tony on this team. What do you like this week? I, I like that you have a meat guy. Interesting. <laughs> uh, Kadarius <laughs> Tony over 50 and a half receiving yards at minus 115. He had 57 yards last week. He played just 44% of the snaps for Kansas City. And boy, did they get a lot out of him. Not only did he have the 57 yards receiving, also had 23 yards rushing. He really showed off what he's able to do as far as being open in, in the field, in the open field, and making guys miss. That's kind of what his specialty is. He is ultra slippery. And I think the Chiefs are going to continue to get richer with a guy like this. And the key to Tony's game, like I said, getting the ball in space. It's going to happen against the Chargers. They've missed seven tackles on wide receivers in their past three games, and they allowed three catches of 20-plus yards last week alone to wide receivers. But this is the stat that sold me. A Kansas City wide receiver has at least 50 and a half, or I should say 51 yards, in eight of nine games this year. Any receiver. Two receivers in Kansas City have had at least 51 yards in each of their past three games. They are starting to use their wideouts more. It doesn't mean bad things for Travis Kelsey, but it means great things for Kadarius Toney, especially since Nicole Hardman has gone on injured reserve and Juju Smith-Schuster already ruled out for the game. I am expecting to see a lot of Kadarius Tony. I am expecting him to have a very good game. He is going to blast past 50 and a half receiving yards. And I just have one last question. Yes. If I had a way to get my face off of the front door of the club so that I could get in, mm -hmm. I'd have to obviously put in a pick. Yeah. How, it, how do I go about that? Do I have to write a letter to somebody? No. Um, do I have to tweet what the pick is? No. If I had a pick for a primetime game to score the first touchdown at plus 1,000 or more odds, how do I go about making it? Alex, what would you suggest? I, I would say, you know, because I was the first member of the club this season, I've got a lot of pull there. Uh, I'm very popular there. A lot of people know my name there. Um, been in there longer than anybody. I don't know if I mentioned that uh, this season. A lot of influence there. I will talk to my people there, Dave. And, uh, yeah, I can probably get your name and, you know, face taken down, give you another opportunity to get in. So I think Coach and I can, uh, as, you know, two club card-carrying members, uh, yeah. give you another opportunity nice. to get into the club. Because uh, I'm just saying that because there is a player in this game, the primetime game, who I like the odds on to score the first touchdown, and he's a fantasy sleeper too. All right, don't give it away. So <laughs> we we do know some people. So Sunday night, just send us into the thread that we normally have. Snake will get it for you, and I promise we will add it. And if you have time, we would love to bring you on the show. You can give it yourself. Live on the show. So we'll make that happen. We'll make that and, happen. And what time is this show that you're 7 30 Eastern time, early edge oh. live, we call it, before every primetime game. Every Sunday at 7 30 p.m. Eastern. Think about this, Alex. What if Dave drops in Sunday night for the you, we're thinking the same thing, right? <laughs> no, we are. <laughs> yeah, we are, coach. I was about to say that's <laughs> Oh, see ya. If that happens, we will be relentless. Relentless. Oh, you're not already there? I could have sworn you were already there. Wow. This is you can relentless. zoom past this spot? That's amazing. I want to see it. Oh Dave, you got to hit it on Sunday. This would be the greatest thing ever. Oh, this would literally be the greatest thing ever. All right. So there's a little tease for Early Edge Live on Sunday. We will have an added pick. We had a lot of controversy last night as Snake – our incredible producer put out his pick and the email at exactly the same time. And see our resident lawyer called him out on it. And I still don't think he had a very good reason. So there's that. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> 
grab your paper, <laughs> grab your pencil. Here is the recap from three of the greatest prop minds in the business today. And I'm going to let them read their picks this week. So, Alex, just run through them. What do you like this week? Yep, we've got Brian Robinson, anytime touchdown, plus 110. Play it to about minus 115. Tony Pollard, over 41.5 rushing yards. I'd play this one up to 44.5 if Zeke is, in fact, active. Dante Foreman, over 50.5 rushing yards. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like this one has steamed up over 56.5. I'd lay off it there, but keep an eye on that. These things fluctuate quite a bit between now and Sunday. Could come back down to a playable number. I'd play it up to 40, or excuse me, 54.5. And, and then last but not least, Stefan Diggs, over 85 and a half receiving yards i'd play this one up to about 90 and a half 91 and a half boom uncle dave go Kadarius tony over 50 and a half receiving yards it wouldn't surprise me about if he had 100 yards in the game you're starting him in fantasy as a number two receiver taylor heineke under 213 and a half passing yards hey there's an under for you since everybody's <laughs> complaining about oh all they do is overs well there's an under it's taylor heineke enjoy it Jawan johnson over 27 and a half receiving yards that's at minus 104. Jawan Johnson, not a bad streaming tight end in fantasy. Zach Wilson, a bad streaming quarterback in fantasy. But I think he'll get you around 220 yards. So I'm taking the over against the Patriots of 190 and a half at minus 115. And Melvin Gordon, over nine and a half receiving yards. It's my favorite prop that I'm giving at minus 120. All right. And finally, a man who I kind of like the nickname the chat is giving him. Better call Sia. Instead of better call Saul. Hey. I like that. I like that a lot. That I might stick. All right, see you. What do you have this week? It's not bad. And Robert, I see you in there. Thank you for your support. Uh, Nico Collins over 40 and a half receiving yards. It's minus 119. Dalvin Cook over 98 and a half rushing and receiving yards. Minus 119. Uh, you know, a little asterisk there. Wait for my pick tomorrow because it also might involve uh, Dalvin Cook. Paris Campbell over 37 and a half receiving yards, minus 120. Darnell Mooney over 43 and a half receiving yards, minus 115. And that bonus pick will be released on Sportsline Twitter. Turn on your notifications. You're already following it. You know the second that pick comes out because you know how fast these lines move when a sports book sees that we make a play. And Robert, I see you too. Yo, y'all doing better call see it dirty. I'm tailing to see his first touchdown prop from here on out. He will hit. Interesting, Robert. So that's that's the wagon you want to ride on today. That's the train you want to get on today. The non-in-the-club train, as we like to call it at the early edge. Very interesting, Robert. We will not forget. <sighs> that's all the damage we can do. Damn it, I love doing this so, 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 so much. But with that being said... There's only one thing left to do, and I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these prop tickets straight to the pay window. Did I mention we were 11-3 and three last week? I believe I did. For my entire crew, love them all. See you in a job. Better call. See, I love it. Oh, my God, do I love it. Prop stars, Uncle Dave from Fantasy Football today. Of course, I am the coach, Jake the Snake on the ones and the twos. It doesn't matter the day, the time, the team the show, the props, the side bets. We've got it right here at the early edge. Good luck.